Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host, as always, is... Bonjour, I'm Nanio. What? Yeah, so we've got two weeks to cover because last week, uh, life kind of just bitch slapped us all in the face and back and, and... Indeed. Yeah, and now we're here, we have two weeks, and oh, yes. <laughs> first of all, first and foremost, everything came out about Brit the baby. Because Brit is stupid. Yes. And even, and, and Brad, for, for, for Brad's credit, he tried. You know, he, he wanted to tell somebody. Yeah, he, he was, he was damn, damn ready to tell Lucas <coughs> until Obrecht came along, uh, got Lucas out of the way, and then pushed Brad off of the parapet into a pit, bale of straw, which yes. I thought was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Brad, of course, calling her out on it, just like everybody else, you know, you know, his, his reaction is, is, is the expected one. I, I think if some old German lady who, you know, who decided that, you know, for whatever reason I needed to die pushed me and I landed in a bale of hay, I would probably scream at her too. You pushed me off the damn parapet! And the events leading up to that with uh, uh, Dr. Obrecht talking about Catherine Bell and all that, I remember watching that when I was younger. That's like, it's like, hello, continuity porn. Well, it is Woo! around, it is around, it, it did go through the anniversary, so there's a lot of it. Yeah, there, the, uh, I think it was, uh, what, Tuesday last week, they actually had a happy anniversary thing. Yeah, which, episode, yeah, which, which, oh, and then that episode, we'll, 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 we'll work up to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we find out that, that uh, it is indeed Luke working with, with uh, Julian Jerome. Or and Or who he's supposed to be. I don't think it's the real Luke. It's no. someone masquerading as Luke. I just, I don't, I really do not think that the real Luke would be bringing drugs into Port Charles. No, it's like, Luke is a lot of things. He is an alcoholic. He is a bit of a, okay, he's not as much of a womanizer from what I've seen, I, I can. I'm sure he's got his moments and everything. He's a little flirty. He's he's a little, you know. He's a scoundrel in a way, but he's not a druggie. And the real Luke definitely is not trying to hit on everything with nice tits. <coughs> like, it's like, sorry, just not yeah. not working. Oh. And of course, quote unquote, Luke is working with Julian, of course, to take down Sunny. And one one bit of character development bit of characterization I like for Julian is even Julian is you know, when Luke's when quote unquote Luke is there doing the drugs right there in the art gallery Julian, Julian's like ah I think I'll pass on those <laughs> like yeah no <laughs> yeah I mean I mean if somebody is as, as bad as a reputation as Julian has will pass up on drugs you know there's an issue oh man Oh, so of course everything came out about Ben and Brit and Obrecht's schemes and everything because of the letter. Elizabeth found it, took it to Lulu, and then Lulu went and started going batshit crazy. Give me yeah. back my son. And then Elizabeth came in. Here's your proof. And Nicholas tore into her. And I'm sorry, but like everybody in that room was a moron. Because every single person in that room let Obrecht walk off with the baby. Yeah, it's like, what the, the fuck? Shit. Like, even Brit, I'm like, don't let her walk off with the baby. You know what? You know she's gonna kidnap him. Of course That's... she is, because she is Obrecht and she Mutter knows best. Yeah. Yeah, fuck Mutter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just Jeeves, man. And of course, you've got things developing about Alexis asking Rick if she's in cahoots with Julian, and only only in the legal sense, you know, the art gallery, as we come to find out. <laughs> <coughs> oh. And, oh god, and of course, once everybody else is gone, Nicholas throws Brit out. Meanwhile, Dante and Lulu are trying to get the baby, but Obrecht, you know, threatens them, threatens Ben, rather, and just makes off with him, kidnaps him. 
because yeah, let's see. Um, you know, stopping Obrek, yeah, but uh, if, if it's gonna end up hurting the baby, we don't want that. <laughs> which yeah, is which, understandable. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but Dante, what kind of shitty cop are you? Okay, uh, we know he had his stuff with him because later on that same night he arrests Brett and he has his handcuffs with him which means he probably had his gun on him yeah but also at the same time if if, let's say you are the parent of some of the person being kidnapped I don't know about you but I would be afraid of you know shooting and missing and hitting the kid well the thing is is even at that close of range Dante is supposed to be trained as a cop. Granted, this is in Port Charles, which has the worst police department in the history of fiction. But still, he's supposed to be trained to take people down, to take hostile people down. And he has to know that Obrecht is not going to kill Ben, and if she gets away with him... She's going to make him disappear. Yeah. So in that scenario, if you're not a dipshit, the smart thing to do is to risk a minor injury to the baby to make sure that he doesn't vanish. I could see that. But again, Dante is also human. <laughs> With very human emotions. I mean, Dante no matter how much... Dante is also an idiot. I'll grant you that. You know, but even even the most... Well trained sharpshooters sometimes they, they, they get the thing. Look at Sean. <clears throat> we uh, haven't seen Sean hit anything correctly, so I'm so still far. doubting whether he is, actually is a sharpshooter. Actually no, no 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 no. We've seen him hit him see thing hit things correctly. With his fists. That's true. But not, not with, with the, the gun. <laughs> not with the bullet, no. Uh, I suppose if the bullet was in his fist, he might be able to hit something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hey, you know, that that happens. And of course, um, we're just going to be all over the damn place, apparently, this week. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm still wanting to go back on Luke, because, you know, he has a talk with Sonny, and and, and Tracy walks in on things, and, and that, that just kind of pans out a bit. You know, Sonny is questioning Luke about the Jeromes, like, like, what do you know about it? What were you doing out there? Luke's like, I just had a smoke out there, all right? Yeah, mm. and, like it, it's actually really fascinating because at that point, uh, Sonny still thinks that Rick is after him, and so he confides in Luke about this and, and asks him if, you know, he thinks that Rick might be working with the Jeromes, trying to, like, just kind of think things through, and um, whoever is wearing Luke's face, I am con- pretty much convinced at this point it is not Luke, uh, Actually tries to talk Sonny into killing his own brother. Yeah. Like, preemptively. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's something... I don't even think Luke would do it with the Cassidines. Yeah. Let alone anybody else. I mean, and keep in mind, the Cassidines, are based, for the most part, are Luke's mortal enemies. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see him doing that. I could see Luke wanting to take one out. But not turning brother against brother, not not preemptively like this. Oh God! So yeah, I, I I've still got my guesses as to who this person portraying Luke is. Um, not you know, it's because it's obviously not Luke. I mm-hmm. mean, it could be anyone from Lord Ashton. I think I mentioned it the last show. I think it might be yes. Lord Ashton, who it, who was uh, Ned's father. Who Ned is going to be coming around because of very. Very tragic incidences that has happened within the past two weeks, which we will get to. Um, you know, Tracy's – I think Tracy's older son, his father is Lord Ashton, and Lord Ashton, I think the last time I remember hearing much about him was part of this drug cartel that was trying to take over Port Charles. And the police actually took them down when they had somebody competent as a commissioner. <laughs> Hi, Robert Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's the thing. I've I've actually been watching some of the older stuff, but between then and now, and some things don't change. Like uh, the episode that actually introduced Mac to the show, uh, there was like this uh, protest going on for this ship coming in. You know, they don't. You know, the, they were like Greenpeace type protesters or whatever, mm-hmm. and the ship basically ended up exploding, 
Oh, and, nice. Yeah, and 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 people were trying to drag people out of you know, kind of swim to safety or whatever. And Robert drags up Mac. Keep in mind, Robert and Mac are brothers. At this point, they had been estranged for a hell of a long time, because Robert thought Mac left their parents to die. And when they were, I think they were stranded in the desert or something, and still having that simmering in Robert's head, uh, he pushed Mac back in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, Mac's like, "What the shit?" <sighs> <laughs> but another thing I wanted to note about that was how the police were handling the protesters. I mean, they weren't going all Billy sticks and tasers on them, but they just—it's—it's it's like at one point some of the protesters got some small boats, were trying to keep the boat from docking. Keep in mind, this is you know the ship rather. This is before the ship exploded, obviously, and and you know, and Robert just kept there, he just kept yelling at them, "Get out of the water! Get out of the water! Get out of the water!" It's like, dude, you, you were giving them official police orders to get out of the water for their safety. Take mm -hmm. a rope and lo loop them in, you know? Okay, maybe not a rope, but go get them. I mean, and it has nothing to do with his clothes or his style because he clearly gets his clothes wet when he's dragging people out of the water. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's not an excuse. It, it could have been just a, a legal hand tying thing, which can explain some of these fuck ups away, but not all of them. <laughs> not all of them. Uh, and of and Julian and Alexis finally have sex. <laughs> Uh, it's like it's about goddamn time. <sighs> uh, <laughs> and 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 this is after 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 Julian's like, what? You 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 what? You what? You're you're accusing me about about bringing Rick into my organization for illegal shit? Uh uh, no way. That that doesn't work. And then, <coughs> I bet you they had some really good hate sex. I would you know they obviously showed it off screen, but yeah, that probably happened. Mm. Meanwhile, Silas and Sam, they go, they go back to his place and they find that his apartment's in, the, in a shambles. Yes. And the cop that ends up coming onto the scene is Detective West. Because <laughs> he was investigating, I think he was investigating the uh, break-in all along. Yeah, because so, someone, someone had uh, reported hearing something and he just happened to be the one that was called. And so he was actually inside the apartment when they got there. Yeah, and and they they have their they have their little bit of out here and there, and then Mama comes in, or, yes. or monster in law, you know. <laughs> oh, of course, going on her anti Silas rant. You know, Silas is no good for my daughter. Blah, 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 blah. You know, if he really loved her, he'd sign the papers and. And of course, Silas just gives up, saying, "You know what, bitch? I'm going to sign these damn papers." And he signs them. Well, he signs and this them. This is after. This is after she says that she that Nina is dead. Yep. Because yeah, keep in mind, and this becomes a little bit of a plot point because Nathan didn't know until until uh, his mom told him. And it's just yeah. <laughs> You would think something that 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 big, you would want to tell your son, you know, almost immediately. Yeah. Say, yeah, your sister is dead, which makes me think that Madeline is hiding a lot more, especially after the end of last week. <laughs> oh, so what 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 uh, Silas and Sam end up doing? They end up teaming up with uh, Detective West. I I keep interchanging the two. But they end up teaming up with him to smoke out who they assume is Ava trying to frame Silas by doing the fake cover – not fake cover story, but fake news story about Nakamura not really being dead, bring it, being brought into Port Charles for information. <coughs> and, and, of course, whoever's responsible, assuming Ava, is going to see the paper and be smoked out. Well, they, they did get Ava's attention, except she went to go see Silas, who was very surprised to see her at the hospital. Yes. And with Sam being the decoy, the real perpetrator comes in, tries to drug Sam, not knowing that, you know, obviously not knowing the, the, the setup. And it turns out to be Madeline. Ooh, which we which for the record, I was I've been saying that for a while. Was, I'm like, it was totally the mom. It was totally the mom. 
It was totally the mom. That's why she wants Silas to pay so much. Yeah. It's, it's like, but why would – my question is why? Why? I mean, I mean, why does she hate Silas so much? Is it really because she is that much of a snob? Or is it there something seems deep? like it. I mean, I mean, or is there something <laughs> deep? Uh, that, that is what I want to know. Uh, and so – so moving back to uh, Obrecht and Ben – for a little bit more. <laughs> uh, Obrecht does make off with Ben and ends up hiding out at Elizabeth South. Elizabeth's house. I can speak, I swear. Liar! <laughs> <laughs> but, but they end up hiding out there and forcing Elizabeth to take them in. You know, for threats of life and death and, and possibly her job too. And a couple of times, people almost find out. Obrecht almost gives her dumbass away, but, you know, to... To Nicholas, of all people, who assumes, okay, it's just Rick. He stayed the night last night. Elizabeth didn't say anything, but Nicholas assumed, and you know, he said his piece, and he left because he apologized to her for how he treated her at at the uh, at, at Windermere. Mm-hmm. Which I've got to say, on the one hand, yeah, he he sounded a little too harsh on certain things, but at the same time, there are some things Elizabeth kind of does need to be called out for. Because she does, she does strike me as too much of a busybody. It, it, Just a it, little bit, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you were, you were right to make the information known, but, you know, Rick had a point. You know, she was about ready to go straight to Nicholas, not to Lulu, but to Nicholas, to just say, hey, look, I got the goods on on your on your fiance right here. Ha 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 ha! Now come and fuck me. You know that sort of thing. And that's that's not cool. That, that's not that's not a good reason. It, it's right for the wrong reason, basically. Oh, and and of course Lulu comes by, and Obrecht somehow doesn't give herself away. And Elizabeth tells Lulu, "No, Rick wasn't here last night. Nobody was here." And yeah. and Nicholas is like, "Okay, what 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 the fuck?" You know, goes to try and talk to Elizabeth again. And comes face to face with Herr Doctor, or Frau Doctor. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I I can German somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but meanwhile, Britt's been in custody. They, Britt's been cooperating as best as she could, even though everybody doubts her, and everybody's like, "Well, don't give us a sob story. We're supposed to feel sorry for you." Well, uh, yeah. Well, on the one hand, yes, a little bit because, yeah, she entered into this. She kind of entered into it blindly, in a way. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like she didn't think that far ahead, and of course she was coerced by her mother. And and you know her mother apparently has a has had a strong hold on her for much of her life. So you know it, it's going to be it would you know it would be hard for anybody to go against their mother if they've had that kind of a kind of a, a hold on them. So of course you know you don't want to disappoint mother, especially when mother is a mad scientist. Yeah. So you know, you mean she she probably felt a little threatened. It's like, okay, if I don't go through with this, mother's gonna do something even more horrible. You know, didn't think that it was gonna turn out this way, and didn't understand that. Didn't well, maybe not understand is the right word, but didn't realize that the that the Dante and Lulu would not be able to conceive another child. She had no idea that was gonna happen, and when she found out, she felt <laughs> horrible. Yes, she did. You know, I mean, yeah, and and we're see, and of course, we as viewers are seeing things that other characters aren't seeing, because that's just the way it goes. But at the same time, it's like nobody wants to listen to Brit. She has told so many lies over the past year. I, I think yeah, it's a little over a year. Uh probably coming up close to a year and a half, uh, depending on when in 2012 she actually came in, mm-hmm. and and you know they're all catching up to her, biting her in her ass. Which, okay, now let all the bites happen. Let them happen. Take the bites. Do what you need to do. Do the right thing. And I've got to say, Diane Miller is scary competent. Yeah. It's like there is no there is no legal precedent for the for the for 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 stealing an embryo being illegal, or you know because of no monetary value that sort of thing. And it's like, holy shit! <laughs> and she got Brit released for that. Yep. Because even though, even though Diane magic. clearly she did not. She, she had no she, idea even what was going on. 
Yeah, and and mm. from the looks of it, she didn't approve of it. But she would not be doing her job if she didn't argue that. So she is scary competent. Very yep. scary. <laughs> oh, and come to find out that once Brit, you know, she leaves the she leaves the PCPD for a little bit, goes to the hospital, confides in Brad, you know, and then they discuss what her options are, you know, like like starting over, you know, taking Ben running or whatever. And then Mutter calls and tells her where Ben is. And at that point, we see Britt just put down the phone, looking like, okay, what is she going to do? Well, and the thing is, yeah, well, and you, did you talk about the uh, the first time uh, Obrecht called and tried to tell Britt where the baby was? Oh, yes, that's right, cause that because was she was Oh, my God. Okay, let's talk, about, let's talk about this for a second, because what happens is Dante and Britt are in the interrogation room, when Obrek calls and Brit is cooperating, she's you know she's trying to get her mother to tell her where she is. When fucking Lulu barges in and starts screaming at Brit, yeah, <laughs> and even and, that's, and to her credit, even later Lulu's like, oh shit, I fucked up. She yes, but here's the thing: up really bad. Lulu, Lulu was stupid to barge in. Mm-hmm. But the bigger question here. Is what kind of fucking police station has a setup where literally fucking anybody can wander into an active interrogation room off the street? You know, that's a good question. I, you know, you know what? Uh, okay, I don't know if it would work so much for me one way or the other because my dad is a city commissioner in my hometown here. But I, I would be tempted to go down there because I'm, I'm sure the police station here has like a, like a small interrogation room or lockup or whatever. I can go see if I could just walk in on an active investigation. I know, right? Yeah. You would. <laughs> they and would there are no consequences for Lulu either. Like. No. no one, e- no one even n- besides Dante. No one even fucking noticed. Yeah, that's that's. Ugh. I'm like, this is the, the most incompetent police force I've ever seen on television. Mhm. Ugh, oh, god damn it. So we've, <laughs> we've we've covered that. Oh, and and of course Brad and Lucas naturally they're no longer together. They're not an item anymore. Yeah, you know, I, that made me sad, but at the same time, like, because, but I get it, though, because Lucas, excuse me, he basically, he's like, you know what, you really screwed over my sister, Uh, you did it on purpose, and yeah, you were, yeah, you were trying to tell me, and yeah, you obviously feel guilty, but that doesn't change the fact that you did it, and I'm not going to be with someone who does shit like that. Yeah, and I can't really blame him for that. Yeah. And uh, then Lucas and Felix happen to meet up. Mm-hmm. And Lucas tells Felix the whole story, and that's when Felix figures out that Brad was trying to tell him about uh, Dante and Lulu's embryos uh, on Valentine's Day, right when um, you know Felix found that text with Lucas in it. And mm-hmm. like they're both just kind of, you know... Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like eh, it's just sometimes it just isn't going to work, and, and then it seemed like they were just kind of just leaving that as it is. Watch Felix and Lucas get together. <laughs> that would be that would be interesting, but you know, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really like Felix at this point. Yeah, <laughs> he his his whininess. And overall, just uh, selfish stupidity has kind of pissed me off. Yeah, and oh, 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 oh. I did, I did forget to mention one thing, which was – it's probably assumed if, if people have been paying t- attention to the show and know the characters a little bit more. Uh, the whole uh, Nakamura uh, paper story thing, how do you think they got that? Julian. <laughs> oh, Daddy, can you do this for me, Daddy? Even though it might bring down your sister, which hey, you know they they don't care. The Jeromes of, I, I've I've read up a little bit more on the history of the Jeromes, and it it seems to me like they always you know they were 
you know, it's kind of at each other's throats for the most part. You know, very little family loyalty except maybe to their father. Ooh. And even then, yeah. I mean, it's like I think Julian ended up killing his sister, and nobody killed nobody killed uh, Victor, his father, because well, he he was shot down by Lucian and choked on a necklace. <laughs> yep. Ah, uh, so you know. But yeah, so that that's that's an interesting thing, and of course well, Jordan, and... Jordan uh, also is around uh, TJ's mother, mm-hmm. and she was looking for a job. She happened to find one at the art gallery. Ava hired her on the spot, and even Sean is like, um, woman, th- th- these guys are my enemy. You know this shit. What the fuck? <laughs> and I have I have to wonder, what was she involved in before? Is, is she like some long-lost long daughter of Victor Jerome or something? <laughs> Which would yeah. be a hell of a twist. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but they are going to, like, tease the shit out of that forever. Yeah. Which, you know, a few weeks, maybe a month or two is fine. Don't, don't make it last five months, please. Yeah. Just not five months, okay? A couple of months is fine. (laughs) Oh, dear. And... Oh, what what else do we have? Okay. Oh, the fifth... uh, oh, oh, okay. There there was a plot hole uh, with the whole uh, Julian and the fake story thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Because what happened was they planted this story in the paper, and then Nathan uh, went over, uh, made sure that uh, he was going to be at the gallery when Ava and Julian were there. And went in to confront Julian and sent Ava out of the room. But they both knew that Ava was going to circle back around and listen. And they they put on a hell of a show where Nathan is like, you know, how dare you print this information about, uh, you know, a witness in an ongoing investigation who's already had his life threatened. Um, and, uh, you know, you need to you need to stop this. And Julian's like, well, I'm not gonna unless you give me something. And Nathan's like, okay, how about this? I, you know, if you will back off, I will make sure that uh, you get the exclusive when Mr. Nakamura uh, does finally give his testimony. Uh, and um, they play up that uh, the, the location that was given in the paper isn't the real location where Nakamura is going to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, Julian's like, you know, if uh, I'm going to be able to send send a reporter over there uh, to talk to Nakamura, they will need to know where, you know, where to go. And so Nathan gives him the uh, the actual location where, uh, you know, where the, you know, the setup is going to be. Yeah. And that was that was to, you know, draw Ava to that particular room. So my question is. How did Madeline know which room it was? That actually – that started forming in my head while you were talking about that. I was like, wait a minute. How did she know? Yeah. There is a there is a leak somewhere. <laughs> Either that or Madeline is one hell of a stalker. Yeah, so – she does <laughs> uh, So I, maybe we'll, we might find out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that – because – because her reveal was one of the Friday cliffhangers, so I'm hoping that we might find out possibly today. Yeah, hopefully. And and keep in mind we're we are recording this on Monday, so yeah. So hopefully. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so to kind of tie into the the rest of the stuff going on, as we mentioned, the uh, show had its 51st anniversary on the first. Always on April Fool's Day. Okay, who decided that the first airing date would be April Fool's Day? <laughs> who decided that? Oh God, it's just. But you know, the show is in its fifty-first year now, um, and some of the stuff they did have going on. They were talking, you know, some nurses' ball stuff. Lucy decided, you know what? Just, just you know, fuck off, Scott. I'm going to stay with my husband, even though I love you both. I can't have both. Gonna have my husband, gonna have the stable guy, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Which, okay, good on her. And Scott and Bobby confide in each other, you know, 
because Scott Scott outright calls himself a home wrecker, which yeah, not gonna lie, uh, he kind of is. And and Bobby's uh, boyfriend uh, Noah Drake ended up going off with someone else, so they're both now newly single. Watch the two of them hook up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Pair the spares. There you go. Oh God. And now we get to the other uh, the, uh, the the other side of everything. Oh, so they did it. They fucking did it. AJ is dead. Killed yep. off for real. You know, as much as killed off for real actually applies to soap operas. Yeah. But, you know, he died. His spirit was taken up to heaven with Emily and the other Quartermains, which I thought was kind of a nice touch. And it is good for, for viewers that have been watching for a while to realize, you know, if there were any living people around there, they would have noted that Jason is not there. And I'm sure Jason would have been there. And, and especially since when AJ was thought to be dead – Jason went to AJ's grave and he basically apologized for like helping Sonny and Carly try and keep Michael away from him and that he deserved, you know, he deserved to have a, a chance to be a father to his son, which at that point Jason had that robbed away from him. Mm-hmm. So he he knew how it felt. Circumstances were obviously different, but he he had that he knew the feeling and he's like, "Holy shit, this is what we did to AJ? What the fuck?" You know, so Jason has has more of a heart than Sonny, because I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure Sonny, he, I, I believe he's had his custody battles. He's had that happen to him too. But you know what? He's still, he was still up until the very end, adamant about wanting AJ away from Michael. Michael, don't go near AJ. Nah, 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 nah. You know, fuck, fuck AJ. You know, blah 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 blah. And even going so far as to killing the poor bastard, which he did, and Sonny. Has all of the Catholic guilt. And you know what? I can't feel sorry for him. Not too much. You know? I mean, I'm sorry. It's like you spent, you, you devote the last uh, 10 to 12, however many, let's see, it's 2014. Um, let's say last 15 or so years, give or take, you know, drumming this hatred for AJ Quartermain into his biological son's head and his son is starting to realize you know what maybe yeah aj has had his bad points he's had his low times but he god damn it he tried and a couple of times where he has supposedly fallen off the wagon it was somebody you know drugging him and making it look like he had fallen off the wagon and i think carly and sonny were one of those times at the very least or at least carly and and they brought up the instance where a where she had miscarried after a fight with AJ. What had happened was they were fighting, and and I think he you know something happened where he ended up grabbing her wrist. I don't know if she was just trying to hit him or if he was trying to pull her away from the stairs or whatever. But she pulled away and fell down the stairs and miscarried. And I think that child was Sonny's. And you know and of course Sonny hates AJ in part because of that now and in this and that and it's just ugh. And need I remind you, AJ, as much of a bumbling idiot he has he had been over the years, you know, whether he's just been, you know, stupid or fallen off the wagon or being incompetent or hiring somebody to kidnap his son so he could try and have a relationship with him because he feels there's no other way because his mobster daddy is a dickhead. Wow, I needed a breath after that. <laughs> you know, the motivation there was his son. He wanted a relationship with his son. And yes, he is a quartermain. Of course, he's going to, you know, play into the whole, uh, you know, the, the corporate politics game like his grandfather did, like his aunt did. You know, it, 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 it's, it's going to happen. That's that's the quartermain way. And, and, and Michael, I'm sure he would end up doing the same. And, and, and of course, everybody, uh, poor Michael, you know, he, 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 he uh, you know, he he is the this show's embodiment of break the cutie. Well, he feels so responsible because he was the one that wanted to put him in, you know, yeah, in surgery. But here's the thing: going by this show's like like the the fake medicine that they have 
told us about because nothing about AJ's condition actually makes any real medical sense. Mm-hmm. Um, the aneurysm was never repaired. So presumably that is what killed him. Yeah. Presumably. So it, it's, it's, you know, Michael, argue one way or the other whether or not AJ should have given his, you know, you know, you know, medical proxy to Michael. You know, it's still not Michael's fault. He, he made yeah. the best decision he thought he could based on what information was given to him. And I, it would have made more sense to give it to Monica because she is a doctor, you know, and his mother. But, you know. I understand why AJ gave it to Michael. He wanted to show Michael that he trusted him, that he loves him. It's like, look, I am very willing to put my life in your hands, you know. And and I've probably argued this on the show before. He had probably had no idea he was going to end up in this situation so soon. He figured, okay, it's going to be I'm going to be old and gray. He'll be able to make those decisions then. He didn't expect to get shot by Sonny Corinthos. Nobody expects the Sunny Corinthos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of course, AJ didn't die without telling somebody Sonny shot him because of Ava. Yeah, but he couldn't fucking say Ava killed Connie. No, 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 no. At no point does he do that because that would just make too much fucking sense. Yeah, I would be surprised if 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 the writer if the writers had given him more time, I would I would likely suspect that he would have also pinned, you know, told Carly of all people, Carly, that Ava also killed Connie. But I'm willing to bet it, it was just written to where he didn't have enough strength or time to blurt out more than just that. You know, so you know, it, I, I I blame the writers on that one. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, and, and of course Carly, Carly has been been kind of wondering. Okay, should I keep this a secret from Michael that his 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 adopted dad shot his bio dad? You know, it's it's just hmm, and <laughs> and she even, she almost confides in Franco, and and then, and then of course Sonny conveniently appears. Uh, and and I love the banter between Franco and Sonny. I, I I Franco, I love him. I'm loving him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I and, and I know you know Franco's past and and all that being this creepy, stocky killer person, you know, and and, and even if it wasn't because of the brain tumor or even if it was the current vo- development, the way he's going now, it's actually pretty good. I I he is very yeah. enjoyable. I like him a lot. Yes. Uh, and, it, and it's like, I got this vibe that, like, you know what, he, he if, if if it wasn't for Carly, he probably would have went balls to the wall against Sonny and fuck anybody else who got in his way. That's true. Because fuck Sonny. <laughs> uh, I mean, seriously, like I said, I do not feel really, I, I really don't feel sorry for Sonny. I'm sorry. It's just, no. You, you, sh- not only did you... I mean, if he had said, okay, it was the heat of the moment, it was a reflex, you know, or something, I was I was hair trigger, I was, you know, had a hair trigger or whatever, or, 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 or something like that, then maybe he would have been a little bit more sympathetic. Maybe. But no. He says, I shot him because I wanted to. And it's just, no, nah, ha, ha, yeah, you lose it with me, buddy. Just, uh-uh, no. You know, we we can give him credit where it's due. He's good with the kids, sure. Just you know, don't 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 be somebody he hates. Apparently, you know. And of course, he's going to find a way to get away with it because he's Sonny Goddamn Corinthos, who's been the who's been in on and off in charge of the Port Charles uh, part of the organization of the mob since the mid '90s. Of like twenty years, twenty goddamn years. It's like. Give somebody else a turn, and other people have tried to take turns, but he shuts them all down. Ah, uh, I mean, Jeebus. He and Ava are fucking god motors. 
That's all there is to it. The writers <laughs> like them. They're fucking god motors. <laughs> they are fun. They're fun at times, yeah, sure. But they're fucking god motors. <laughs> oh, god damn it. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> Been, been kind of been kind of going here and there and everywhere. I think we've got the two weeks already, haven't we? I mean, what else? Oh, have, what else have we got? There's so hit? much. There's so much to freaking keep track of. Yes. Uh, so we talked about Nicholas dumping Brit. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, when <laughs> did we talk about uh, him and Nicholas and Elizabeth? Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, we did we did get those and Nicholas has seen Frau Doctor. Yes. And she is most likely going to have a gun on him. And I'm just Elizabeth. Like <sighs> run out the door. Yeah. Run it's... run out the door. Yeah, Oprah is in the hallway. not going to hurt the baby. Baby's not your responsibility anyway. Run out the fucking door. Yeah. Go tell someone. Yeah, which, you know, if you had done that, then Brit may not have had to do that. Because that's what she ended up doing. Or, or that's where she ended up going, to the PCPD. And I'm pretty sure she's going to tell them. I hope so. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've, I've seen – I've actually seen like, like promos for the month or what have you. And there is a scene of, I think, Dante in a, and I think one other cop at least at Elizabeth's house, stuck guns drawn or whatever. I'm willing to bet that Brit does mention it because how the hell else is he going to get that information? I don't know. So, of course, I'm, they are having people follow Brit, so. Yeah. So that, that also works, which turns out may not be much of a thing, so. Oh, dear. Hmm. So wow. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I, I will admit, you know, you know, with with this whole scheming to bring down Sonny on the part of Julian and not Luke, you know, I, I don't like the idea that Luke is brought to try and turn brother against brother. I'm I'm not too fond of that. Um I don't know exactly what he's got planned with Julian though, other than possibly taking those drugs and putting them in Sonny's legitimate business shipments, which has been done before. And well, see, no, he said, loop... he said that uh, they were going to start selling drugs in Fort Charles oh, that's to right. make money. That's right. I, I think I think where I, where I made that particular leap is because it would make sense. It would make sense. Granted, it's been done before, so it's not very original, but it would make sense. And, of course, not Luke – probably would may not realize that that has been done before whereas luke the real luke one of sonny's good friends would probably know this yeah so yeah so knows better than to try and do that whereas not luke not so much uh, oh god so <laughs> uh so i know I've, I've heard you know victor is supposed to be coming back at some point uh Good old Victor Cassidyne. I wonder what he's going to be up to. I know, uh, and of course, I mentioned earlier Ned Ashton's going to be back, uh, Tracy's older son, because obviously they're going to have to have a funeral for AJ, which is very sad. And I got pissed. And it's like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> you, you turned him into the butt monkey chew toy for a couple of months. Have, ev- you know, have everybody just drag him through the mud except for like, like Monica and Michael. And then you kill him off for the indecency. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. What the fuck? And it's like, oh, we'll beat up the underdog and we'll kill him off. No. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it makes it, it, it makes for more of an emotional connection. Hi, I'm living proof of that, but it, it's just cruel, man. Ah. Uh, and you know that a lot, you know some of this stuff it, it is based in reality you know because you know there are people out there that go through what AJ went through you know just having a tough you know even even with the money that he had in life because you know quarter maids are not exactly poor you know he still had it rough yeah I mean just because you're well off doesn't mean you don't have it rough 
And and AJ's a case of yeah, he was well off, but he still had it rough. And there were times where he didn't have access to his family's funds, so he had to work on his own. He had to live off of his own thing. And yeah, he made his mis- share of mistakes. He, he he committed crimes he's not proud of, but in the end, he was trying to turn his life around and be better. And when he fell off the wagon, he just kind of lost control of himself. And he was starting to get some kind of help. But no, the writers decided, okay, well, okay, it's part the writers, part because the actor wanted to go on and do other things, but the, they could have written him out a little bit better, I think. But you never know. They might find a way to bring him back, even though he literally walked up into the light. Yeah. yeah but we'll see. <laughs> we'll have to see. Uh, but then again, they haven't brought back Emily or Georgie in 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 the the you know physical form either. So. No, but but you ghosts ghosts yeah. exist. That's true. Although you know, I do seem to remember it wasn't long after Robert and Anna were presumed killed in the early nineties. Uh, it was after Robin had first learned she had HIV and her then boyfriend had died. You know, Robert and Anna's spirits were there talking to her, and then, like, years later, here they are coming back. So <laughs> it's possible. I suppose it is possible. They'll, they they could find a way to do it. And I've got to say, I like the I, – as I mentioned earlier, I like the touch when, when AJ was going up the stairs to heaven that they had the other quartermates there. They had Lila, and they had Edward, and they had Alan, which – and they didn't even use, like, like current Stuart Damon, you know – um, uh, salt and pepper hair, Alan. They they had the younger Alan, and it's like everybody that just nodded to him, and it's like motherfucker, Stuart Damon is still alive. You couldn't get him for a two second voiceover. Ah, <laughs> uh, god damn it. And and what would have been an interesting touch is if if AJ still thinking that Jason is dead, note actually noting, hey, where's Jason? You know. But I, I that may have it may have just taken away from the scene. So, but but I thought I thought that would have been an interesting one, even if it did take it away. Maybe maybe a later one, AJ would be like, yeah, Jason's not Jason's not around here. And speaking of of nice touches, I f- I found it interesting that they not only had Sonny and Carly remnants throughout the entire you know throughout the most of the anniversary episode, which a lot of people are complaining about because there's so much more to General Hospital than just Sonny and Carly, which is true, you know, so much more than what they showed. But you know, you take what you can get. But they also had the actresses playing Carly before come back and reprise Carly for just a little bit. Yeah, that was that was weird. That I was. Thought. Like, I I understood what they were doing, but I'm like, you know, if I didn't know this was coming, Mm -hmm. because I had seen seen an article about it, um, if I didn't know that was coming, I would have been so goddamn confused. Yeah, I I outright called Carly a Time Lord. (laughs) I was like, bitch is a Time Lord. You know, you you just never see her regenerate. And Sonny is thinking back to all the other, other times that Carly had been someone else. Yes. And and keep in mind they only brought back two of the actresses that played Carly. There was a third one, but I don't I don't remember what happened to her. I think she was kind of short. She was between um well the first one was Sarah Brown, second one that they showed was Tamara Braun, and then there was someone between I think it was Tamara Braun and Laura Wright who's currently playing Carly. Uh they for whatever reason they weren't able to get her back or what have you. Uh and and one little an, another little footnote that that I actually kind of Remembered now that I'm looking at the uh, screen cap for it on iTunes, is uh, Morgan. He had his like his, his little thing with Ava coming to see Ava, and and you know he he's he's starting to grow a little bit. Like yeah. you know Ava, if you're gonna you know pull this kind of evasive lying bullshit, you know we can't do this. You know you gotta you gotta be you gotta be honest with me, otherwise this ain't gonna work. And Ava Ava had just. Uh... You know, found out about Nakamura and just finished listening into that conversation. So she was in full freakout mode, and she's basically like, "I don't have time for this shit." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which of course sets Morgan's red flags off. So, hmm. And one thing, another cute thing um, during the anniversary episode when Emily and AJ were there, uh, trying to you know consoling Monica, 
who basically the only family she has left is is Tracy. Yeah. You know, and and as far as blood relations, as far as I know, she's got nobody else. So it's it's like from what Monica knows, you know, her her only biological son has died. Both of her adopted children had died, or so she thinks in the case of Jason. And now, you know, and her husband is dead. Her, you know, I'm sure her parents are dead. You know, Edward and Lila are dead. It, it's just like there's so much, you know, they're, they're removing all of the older quarter mains. I mean, we still have Michael. We still have uh, Danny. You know, we have those. We have them. We have Tracy. There's still Ned and Dylan out there somewhere, but there's not very many. I think I'm counting them on one hand at this point. Mm. So it's, it's – and for a while, the Quartermains were one of the biggest the biggest draws into the show. And yeah. they, they did they – did ex, they did an example of this you know, during the whole thing, and, and I think it was Emily who said, you take care of, you take care of that house, and AJ Quip, dad gave it to you. Yeah. Or, 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 or a play on the whole, it's my house, Alan gave it to her, that sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah. Which I loved. I love that little. Comment. I th- I didn't think that was cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, I just oh when they when they have Patrick on again. Oh God, because he was already feeling horrible about it not being as su- successful. Now and he's gonna hear that AJ has died. Oh God. Yeah. I am not looking forward to that. Oh dear. Mm. Oh, speaking speaking of death, mm-hmm. um, Madeline has told um, Silas and Nathan that Nina is dead, yes. but we know she totally isn't because one of the things that they just announced was they announced that they cast the part of Nina Clay. Yeah, we're kind of figuring she wasn't dead anyway, but this right here, especially you know, especially with Madeline. Waiting three weeks to tell her son. Yeah. Why would you do that? I mean, if if, if I was away and and somebody close to me down here had died, you can bet within probably three hours I would be getting the phone call. Yeah. So there is like, yeah, Madeline clearly is the mastermind here, as we're as we've seen, and. How this is going to play out, we don't know. But with that, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, I know it's looking a little shorter, depending on how much I ramble. <laughs> but uh, if we want to find Namio on social media, where can we find her? You can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. You can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. And you can find me on uh, Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Sweet. And you can find me on Twitter at gomer 21 X, Tumblr at gomer 21 X. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And I just want to say that with the whole TigWitig tryout thing coming up in the next month, I may be trying out for that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just maybe. Uh, I wouldn't mind this show being on there because they actually, you know, that's a niche niche that they're not filling is soap operas. That's true. So maybe this, and I wouldn't mind doing a sideshow along with it. Uh, so if you, if you think it might be a good idea, you know, hey, s- s- you know, pull it out there, you know, t- t- send this out there, retweet it, reblog it, put it everywhere, whore, whore me out. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody send like all of the links to Rob Walker. <laughs> All of them. All yes. of them. Yes, because it, it would be great. It would be great for the views. It would be great to have more more fans to interact with and, and have discussions with, although I would be a little wary of the comments. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you got to take the good with the bad and the bad with the good. Um, and, of course, if, if you want to help support the show in a financial sense – uh, the site does have a donations bar, but also I am on Patreon at gomer 21 double X. Five dollars per month gets you not only early access, but I'm also doing uh, as a way of saying thank you to my patrons. I'm also taking requests. I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna limit them at some point once I get more, but I'm gonna be taking requests for like a one-off playthrough videos. One of which is up. Which one is it? I don't know. 
But uh, if you if you pledge five dollars a month, you can find out. <laughs> little bit of little bit of incentive, and of course twenty dollars you get ad space on my site, which we're still working out. Um, the the lady who's been working on hers, you know, she's been having some issues with it. Life's kicked her in the face, and then she had other issues with the thing itself. So um, once she sends it to me, it'll go up, and you'll see it, and it'll be great. And and I can honestly prove that no, I am not trying to scam anybody. I don't think anybody's thinking that, but <laughs> you know. It, uh, it's it's me covering my own ass basically there. Um and and of course I I would be remiss in if if I didn't also uh, pimp out my girlfriend's uh, uh, Patreon account Becky Hop over on Patreon go and get some commission work done for her. Uh, yeah, she's what? awesome. She is awesome. If you if you look at my Pokemon Quartz Let's Play series that is her work. I'm gonna work on uh, having her do some stuff for. Uh, my other series as well to kind of to kind of get them all into the similar style, and uh, and I, I know a couple of them are going to be looking at upgrades anyway. One because one of them is about to hit episode 100 in a couple of weeks. The other one we're having a change of, of cast, so so uh, yeah, we're going to need some artwork upgrades. And, and I'm talking to her about it and getting things done. Yee! Um, but uh, anyway, Patreon.com/slash Becky Hop. If you want to go and check her out and get something from her, you will not regret it. Uh, so with that, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next week, I hope. <laughs> and until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.